welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to a brief devotional from God's Word. This is a devotional from the Treasury of Daily Prayer to bless you as God works repentance in your life. Let us ever walk with Jesus, follow his example pure. Through a world that would deceive us, and to sin our spirits lure. Onward in his footsteps treading, pilgrims hear our home above. Full of faith and hope and love, let us do the Father's bidding, Faithful Lord, with me abide. I shall follow where you guide. May the Lord bless your day. This is a Daily Lenten Devotion for Friday, Lent 2, March 5th. 2021. The New Testament reading is from Mark 8, 1 through 21. In those days, when again a great crowd had gathered, they had nothing to eat. He called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd, because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way. And some of them have come from far away. And his disciples answered him, How can we feed these people with bread here in this desolate location? And he asked them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven and he directed the crowd to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And they set them before the crowd. And they had a few small fish. And having blessed them, he said that these also should be set before them. And they ate and were satisfied and they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full, and there were about four thousand people. And he sent them away, and immediately he got into the boat with his disciples, and they went to the district of Delmanatha. The Pharisees came and began to argue with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Truly I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them, got into the boat again, and went to the other side. Now they had forgotten to bring bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, Watch out. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they began to discuss with one another the fact that they had no bread. And Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Having eyes do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember, when I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, Twelve. And the seven for the four thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, Seven. And he said to them, do you not understand? 
This ends the New Testament reading. A writing from the Augsburg Confession Our churches are falsely accused of abolishing the Mass. The Mass is held among us and celebrated with high reverence. Nearly all the usual ceremonies are also preserved, except that the parts sung in Latin are interspersed here and there with German hymns. These have been added to teach the people, for ceremonies are needed for this reason alone, that the uneducated be taught what they need to know about Christ. Not only has Paul commanded that a language understood by the people be used in church, but human law has also commanded it. All those able to do so partake in the sacrament together. This also increases the reverence and devotion of public worship. No one is admitted to the sacrament without first being examined. The people are also advised about the dignity and use of the sacrament, about how it brings great consolation to anxious consciences, so that they too may learn to believe God and to expect and ask from Him all that is good. This worship pleases God. Such use of the sacrament nourishes true devotion toward God. Therefore, it does not appear that the Mass is more devoutly celebrated among our adversaries than among us. It is clear that for a long time, the most public and serious complaint among all good people is that the Mass has been made base and profane by using it to gain filthy wealth. Everyone knows how great this abuse is in all the churches. They know what sort of men say Masses for a fee or an income, and how many celebrate these Masses contrary to canon law. Paul severely threatens those who use the Eucharist in an unworthy manner. Whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and the blood of the Lord. Therefore, when our priests are warned about this sin, private masses were discontinued among us, since hardly any private masses were celebrated except for the sake of filthy gain. The Augsburg Confession Let us pray. Lord Jesus, bread of life, in your great compassion, you fed the multitude with a few loaves and a few fish. Feed us the holy food of your word, broken open, that our hearts may burn, and your very body and blood, that eyes may be opened to see you as the very bread of heaven. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Luther's Morning Prayer I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you, for into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Or, Luther's Evening Prayer I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Taught by our Lord, and trusting in his promises, 
we are bold to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Lenten Catechesis, the third article. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Through this article, the Holy Spirit, with his office, is declared and shown. He makes people holy. There are many kinds of spirits mentioned in the Holy Scriptures, such as the spirit of man, heavenly spirits, and evil spirits. But God's Spirit alone is called the Holy Spirit, that is, He who has sanctified and still sanctifies us. The Holy Spirit causes our sanctification by the following, the communion of saints or the Christian church, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. That means, he leads us first into his holy congregation and places us in the bosom of the church. Through the church, he preaches to us and brings us to Christ. For Christ has acquired and gained the treasure for us by his suffering, death, resurrection, and so on. But if the work remained concealed so that no one knew about it, then it would be useless and lost, so that this treasure might not stay buried, but be received and enjoyed. God has caused the word to go forth and to be proclaimed. In the word, he has the Holy Spirit bring this treasure home and make it our own. Therefore, sanctifying is just bringing us to Christ so we receive this good, which we could not get ourselves. The Large Catechism This has been a brief Lenten devotion provided by St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Caseyville. We pray that these devotions may be a blessing to you during this season of Lent. Let us also live with Jesus, He has risen from the dead, that to life we may awaken, Jesus, you are now our head. We are your own living members, where you live, there we shall be, in your presence constantly, living there with you forever, Jesus let me faithful be, life eternal grant to me.